All right, guys, setting up hole five here. And uh, here you can see that uh, I have uh, Apocalypse set up for this hole, B52. Now, my B52 out of four is going to be 80 accuracy. Um, I usually play that at max club. Uh, maybe one point one per ring somewhere in there and then i'll play mid club kind of maybe about 1.4 then then mid club min club maybe 1.8 somewhere around there maybe 1.2 1.4 1.8 um they're a, a, a bit off of the uh you know any sheet that you might have so you know b52 four five six seven they all kind of deviate slightly from the sheet um, I'm not really sure why I, I, I really think it has to do something about you know how high it flies um, but the only thing that I don't understand is why if you know Goliath is kind of the same why it doesn't uh, you know have a very similar result but for some reason, you know, the way that I play the B-52 is a little bit different. So if I get to the positioning where I want for my case with B-52-5, I'm going to play it probably pretty close to 1.5 per ring. And uh, if you have a little bit more advanced B-52, well, anything beyond a 4 um, at a B-52-5 uh, is when you get the accuracy boost. Um, I would use a little bit closer to 1.2 per ring. So that'll be the difference. So 1.5 per ring versus 1.2. Um, if you get to my spot, you're automatically going to be basically at um, your mid-club distance. Like there's, there's almost nowhere else the ball can go. So um, I do highly recommend this shot. Um, bring nirvana bring spitfire because it'll give you just an easy route to the green if you do screw this shot up now i have yet to do that yet and let's hope that that trend continues in this video but i have seen a lot wow we just got a mega win where you could actually probably carry that gap with that turbo ball so i'm surprised to see that guy switch and bail out of that shot However, this, this shot that I go for is very simple. Um, uh, a lot of people have been screwing it up because they're really not visualizing right. So they're, they're not realizing that the elevation comes into play and you're shooting to a lower target. You need to overplay the wind. So almost everybody that I see do this, that great ball help. Uh, almost everybody that I see doing this is missing the fairway to the right because they're not adjusting enough. So for me, on a nine wind, I'm looking 10 rings down as my land zone. So I'm using the proper adjustment, you know, and I'm setting my power to that. So for instance, and I don't even care about the top spin. I'm going to come off of it even. Like it's not a big deal. But what I do need to do is I need to set my power accordingly. And I also need to visualize, you know, straight over. So I'm just visualizing straight over in the direction of the wind, eight to nine rings. And you can see I only have probably about seven to land. So I'm going to back off the power and you can see how I'm setting it, but I'm also curling it around the tree. And this has led me to, um, you know, really just hit this perfect. Uh, I have yet to miss the fairway. You know, people might think it's a risky shot, but I haven't screwed it up yet. So is it really that risky? You just gotta get, you just gotta know the proper ring adjustment. And of course, you can do it with any club. You, you can do this with quarterback. Um, so if you haven't seen guys doing it, you know, all you need is a better ball. You bring a berserker, you bring a, a, an origin ball, and you can clear that gap with any club that you want. It's just all about knowing the proper ring play and the way to set up. So what I'm doing is I'm visualizing a straight line in the direction of the wind, roughly 10 rings down and I'm setting my power to that. So I was basically coming off what I felt was about three rings of power because I was mentioning how it looks like, you know, I, seven was the fairway's edge. So if I could just come off, say, 
you know, three miles per, three rings. And that's where you could see me kind of going into kind of mid power. So I didn't even go a lot. I, I, I just went basically half power on that shot. And here you can see, I'm going to work you guys through a B52 adjustment. So let's see if I can't do this. And like I mentioned, you know, I, I don't even really have to set it up. I already know that it's going to be at mid club. And you can see the way that I'm setting up basically, you know, right in line with the pin. And I'm going to play it very close to that 1.5 per ring adjustment. Um, and I'm just going to take a little bit of extra time to get, make sure that I'm getting this needle exactly the position that I want before I actually adjust and then pull straight down. So here you're gonna see two and a half rings, or five and a half, sorry. Perfect ball. And at the very least, this is going to be very close. And there you can see just outside, it has to do with the pull angle. So I know that I'm going to be giving it a good ring, a good run every time. And you know, it's just gonna come down to just fractions of inches rotating the screen. You gotta be very precise with the way that you go about doing it. And that's gonna be a very straightforward approach for Albatross. <clears throat> and do be very careful as uh, noticing the way that I was doing the side spin as well. You can get in kind of little voids where when you move right and left, that the ball guide will, and, and that's another thing, had I had a a B-52-7, it would have been a little bit easier or whatever because I'd have a little bit more ball guide. So that's one of the things that I was missing out a little bit on, making that shot just a little bit harder. And you can see as a result, um, just wasn't able to get it. But uh, hopefully, you know, I'll be able to. Um, you know, in the later rounds, uh, I, I have got it twice already. Um, both were on Monday, I believe. And, uh, you know, it's very straightforward. Uh, even if you mess up, as you can see my opponent, um, you know, you, you have an easy route to the green. Technically, you could still make it with a Spitfire or Nirvana. It's just all about, you know, solid ring play and just hoping that it comes off the hill just right. <clears throat> but let's try to... Let's try to work through this real quick. I didn't see my opponent's shot. I have no idea where he is. Um, I usually play, eh, let's go rough bump here. And you know, just how, similarly to what you saw me do with uh, my qu quarterback, I'm going to do with a puck. Now the only difference being that I'm going to, what's mid club on a puck, maybe 1.7 per ring. So I'm gonna go probably six rings here for my adjustment. No curl. I'm upping the backspin. And why am I upping the backspin? It's because it's a tailwind. So the ball's going to want to roll out farther. So I need to make sure that I account for that. And here you can see that with upping the backspin, the ball just comes in. So you don't need the guide. If that shot teaches you anything, it's the fact that uh, when you go about doing it and hitting it like that, um, you can just use the shot that you hit with the guide, and then you can just recreate it without the guide. So you'll always be able to get very consistent on that rough bump using that method. The only thing that I was missing was just kind of like minor tweaks. I couldn't exactly see where to get the ball positioning to where it actually feeds exactly at the hole. So I was trying to guess a little bit. And that's where you kind of saw it shooting off to the left or towards the right. So I needed just, you know, maybe another yard to the, a yard to the to the left on my initial setup, or possibly some curl. But in any regard, you know, do keep that tip in mind. Uh, good luck with that fifth hole, guys, and uh, see you guys for hole six coming.